two functions here, f of x equals 2 tan x and g of x equals sec x. We'll ask for the range of each. So tan x, first of all, just going to draw a little sketch of it. Remember, it's between 0 and 2 pi in radians. So tan, go, there's an asymptote at 90, which is pi over 2. And it looks a bit like that. And that's 3 pi over 2. And it's going to look a bit like that. So that's tan between 0 and 2 pi. And we're going to get the range as all possible values of x because it goes from minus infinity plus to plus infinity. So we would write down that f of x belongs to the set of all real numbers. That will be expected, that little bit of notation. Let's take a look at sec x. That's quite an interesting function as well. So if I draw cos x between 0 and 2 pi, it looks like this. And then sec x, it's also 1 or minus 1 at the same point. But as cos x goes to 0, sec x goes to infinity, and it actually goes up like this. And then you get another asymptote here. Worth being familiar with this curve. So that is what it looks like. And cos x is between 1 and minus 1. Sec x is like the exact opposite. It's a, a 1 or more. So not the exact opposite because they can both equal 1 or less than minus 1. So I wrote that g of x is less than or equal to minus 1 or g of x is greater or equal to 1. And the answers they gave it using set notation, I think. You could use interval notation, but I don't know. If, I mean, if I'm not asked for it, I normally just use an or and write it like this. On to B. So we're asked to show that f of g of 0.6 is 5.33. So let's find g of 0.6 to start with. That's going to be sec of 0.6, which kind of did it very quickly here. I didn't even talk about it. Did I even talk about it being 1 over cos? I'm not sure, but it's going to be 1 over cos of 0.6. Now just make sure you've got your calculator in radians. Have that kind of, yeah, mine is already. So 1 over one point two one one six. So f of g of 0 0.6 is going to be f of 1.2116. Which is going to be 2 tan. 1.2116. I think I've shown quite a lot of work in here, but it is a two mark question. Probably one mark for that bit there. I haven't actually checked. All right, so now I can do tan just of the answer, so I'll get the exact amount, and I can times by two. And we get 5.326, which I, I would write down a bit extra, and then we're going to round it. In part two, we're asked to explain why um, the inverse of g of 0 0.6 is not defined. Now, there's a few ways a function cannot be defined. It might uh, go to infinity, like 1 over 0 is not defined. Um, it might not be in the domain of the function. Um, so for f of x, we've said that the range is all real numbers, which would kind of imply that the domain was all real numbers, so that's not going to be a problem. Actually, if there's only a one mark question, the issue is the function itself. And I've sketched it, and as you can see, you get a few values of x, or two values of x give you the same value of y. And that is that's the answer to this question. f of x is not one to one. You can write it's many to one, I just think saying it's not, it has to be one to one to have an inverse. Okay, so we, we literally just cannot compute f minus 1, the inverse, because it doesn't exist. By definition, an inverse has to also be one-to-one. -one. It can't be one-to-many. 
and this is this is many to one so the inverse would be one to many but it's enough to just to say this okay good Finally, we're asked to solve this equation, f of x squared plus 6 g of x is equal to 0. So remember, f of x is 2 tan x. And then g of x is this sec x. So the moment I've got tan and sec, we're going to need to use a trig identity. And it's going to be along the line. I always prove this from first principles. I never remember them. Well, well, sine squared plus cos squared is one, I remember. And then all right, I want tan squared. And I know that tan squared and sec squared are related. So I'm going to divide through by cos. I'm going to get tan squared plus one tan squared of x. But I'm just writing it shorthand. And this is going to equal sec squared. There we go. So now I can create a quadratic in uh, tan, in sec squared, sorry. So it's going to be 4 tan squared. It does show, say show detailed reasoning. So all right, I'll put this step in. Right, I can divide through by 2. So I'm going to do that. And then tan squared is going to become sec squared x minus 1. You can either just factorize in terms of sec x, or if you prefer, you can do a substitution u equals sec x. It's going to factorize, it's got to be 2 sec x and sec x. And to get the 3, I can put a 2 here because that's going to give me 4, and then a 1 here that's going to give me 1, make this one negative, make this one positive. sec x equals a half or minus 2. Now remember the graph right at the top? Okay, we actually, and we wrote down the range of it anyway, we said that it, it can't equal a half because it's uh, this is the range. If you try and put it in your calculator, you get math error, but we need to reject this. And then to solve sec x equals minus 2, we put it back in terms of cos. So 1 over cos x is minus 2, and cos x is going to equal minus a half. Remember, we are working in radians, and we've still got this. Uh, we're just looking where the functions are defined between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so I can draw the graph and I can see there's going to be two solutions. So two thirds pi is one of them. And the other one you find by using the symmetry of the curve or you might use cast diagrams, however you want to do it, but it's going to be 2 pi minus 2 over 3 pi. Let's get the other one. Which gives 4 over 3 pi. All right, plenty of places where you can trip up in this question for sure, but that is our solution.